They got Micah. Dutch. Arthur. <clears throat> What's going on? They got Micah. He, he's been arrested for murder. Frank and Arthur knew very little details when it came to the disaster they'd just been informed of. But this is what they did know. The man who had saved their lives on multiple occasions was now in danger. The man responsible for pulling them out of an impossible situation that was on the verge of breaking them needed their help. And so, in a moment of such worry and uncertainty, there was one thing that Frank and Arthur were absolutely sure of. Their best friend needed saving, and they were the duo who was going to save him. But our heroes were more than aware that this would be no easy task, because you see, Michael was being held in one of the most highly guarded facilities on the planet. The Strawberry Jail was absolutely nothing to scoff at as its appearance was very much a facade. Everybody who knows anything about the West will tell you, if you get thrown in the Strawberry Jail, there is no escaping that town. You may escape the chains that have you bound, you might even escape the walls that have you trapped, but if you are a prisoner to that town, you will never leave the confines of Strawberry alive. Because for all the money that is skimped on the facilities themselves is a massively funded, highly skilled security detail who have been injecting high potency miracle tonics from the moment they were born. Their purpose is to stop you from leaving that town. They are solely dedicated to that mission. And God help anyone who gets in the way of that mission. So after taking Lenny out for, you know, one or two drinks just to, you know, calm the nerves, nothing too excessive, Frank and Arthur rushed in the direction of Strawberry with absolutely no plan in mind whatsoever. Now, many people would call them brainless fools for this, and many people would be right. But many people also aren't a bearded saint with a telekinetically superpowered horse for a companion, so a plan could probably move down the priority list in this case. Our boys closed the gap between Valentine and Strawberry as quickly as they could, as Lenny had informed them that Micah was mere days away from being executed. It's said that they would have killed him sooner, but apparently any rope they had used to hang him so far just hadn't been strong enough. Before long, Frank and Arthur arrived, quickly surveyed the area, and instantly got to work. Arthur moved directly towards Micah as he used his newly gained ability of Holy Perception to locate his exact position. Now, Micah knew that it wouldn't be long before Arthur and Frank arrived to rescue him, but he also knew that once he was broken from this cell, there wouldn't be much time for greetings. The moment that cell was compromised, the juiced up security detail would undoubtedly spring into action. It was time to get to work, but admittedly, I was a little hesitant to really dive into this mission. I knew before going into this one that it was probably going to be a little bit of a challenge. I mean, this was one of the missions that I had on the oh shit, please save me, this is probably impossible list that I made before even starting this series. But as usual, my initial go-to was to see if Micah could handle the enemies without too much assistance first. Now I lassoed a couple of enemies here and there to begin with, just because experience had now taught me that complete inactivity was usually the recipe for a deceased companion. Which never tastes good. Now I knew sitting there and waiting for Micah wasn't going to work after a couple minutes of zero progress, so I decided I'd make a move and draw the attention off Micah from another position. And I think it's worth mentioning, these enemies also dealt a ton of damage. I mean, they were souped up on performance enhancing tonics after all, so I made good use of all the health items I'd bought previously and began gradually knocking more of the enemies over. And just as I started to get a tiny bit worried that I couldn't make any progress progress already, Micah secured his first kill. Micah was still yet to gain full confidence, but he was slowly chipping away at Strawberry's first wave of security as I utilized my holy health potions to survive the action. After Micah stood looking kinda clueless for a while, clearly feeling disorientated after his recent mistreatment, 
I ended up having to drag the final enemy of the wave right to him, where he was snapped back to reality with a point blank bullet to the chest. The next wave was positioned blocking the bridge, clearly determined to recapture Micah so they could experiment on and study the only case of BS PTSD known to the world. Micah and Weston Jesus made quick work of the bridge boys, however, as Arthur tripped them and dragged them into better positions for Micah to deal with them. Without any violence intended, of course. This, this is a holy man we're talking about. Now, the man on the porch here was a little bit more difficult, purely just because his position gave him more cover from Micah's shots, and I also didn't want to risk pulling him down these stairs and accidentally killing him. So I played it safe and restrained him where he stood instead. More of the guards were already waiting for Arthur and Micah as they started down the next street, but the power of one man's lasso and another man's post-traumatic stress proved way too much for them once again. Again. Besides, uh, this guy, th this guy's mustache must have been enchanted with bullet resistance or something because none of Micah's bullets bothered him one bit. But a bulletproof mustache was nothing against some good ropes and a couple of knots. Now, I want you guys to really pay attention here because what you're about to see just further proves how nice a guy our good friend Micah is. Because not only is he not afraid to put in the hard work to escape this town after everything that he's been through, but in the midst of it all, he still insists on saying a friendly and respectful goodbye to his good friends who live in the shack just down the road from where he was being held. How sweet is this man. After saying an emotional farewell to his buddies, we went right back to the task at hand escaping this fucking hellhole. Now the final wave of Strawberry Security is well known across the West as being a highly skilled group of merciless and powerful killers. They are Strawberry's last line of defense. They are strictly for when things get really bad. And right now, for them, things were really, really bad. Because Micah and Arthur just continued moving through them with ease. The same strategy involving trips, ties, and distractions was used by Arthur, as Micah got rid of them the way that he knew best. It had served them so well so far, with basically no roadblocks in between. It was an absolutely unstoppable formula, until it wasn't. See, I actually saw a couple of comments addressing this mission before I'd even reached it, and... Those comments kind of shared a common theme. This mission would go mind-blowingly well, no kills, no knockouts, pretty much smooth sailing until this. With all active enemies seemingly dealt with, Michael was left with a chance to really think about everything that had happened to him so far on this journey. And the past trauma of that initial slap that changed his life forever just hits him at the absolute worst moment possible. He is frozen in contemplation, pondering his place in the universe, really asking himself life's biggest questions. And there is no breaking him from this trance. Only one restrained enemy remains and yet Escape isn't on his mind. And this, of course, is a massive problem for everybody. Eventually, I untied the restrained enemy after trying to get the horses to knock him out for me, but he was only out for Micah's blood. And Micah was powerless. Now, I hadn't completely lost hope yet, but I won't lie, I was starting to doubt that this could be done perfectly. As I said, any comment from someone who had tried this stated the exact same problem. Micah was damaged. He just wouldn't move beyond this point. But I was feeling too determined to let this be. I knew that there had to be a solution of some sort, or at least, I hoped there was one. I followed the same strategy as before, tripping the enemies, tying the enemies, basically just providing a distraction so Micah could take the enemies out more effectively. And aside from the guy on this balcony that took Micah just a little bit of extra time to kill, there was absolutely no problem on any attempt. Things kept going exactly according to plan until 
this. Michael was just stuck in this contemplative state, completely unaware and uncaring of the chaos that surrounded him. And look, I, I understand and I know that he's been through a lot, I, I, I know that things have been really tough for him lately, but I couldn't help but be frustrated. It had gone so well up until this point. Really, it had gone unbelievably well. I quite literally couldn't believe how easy it was to get up to this point without even having to knock anyone out. I was trying everything I could think of to get some sort of outside force to deal with these remaining and restrained enemies. But even if I did get rid of these enemies somehow, I wasn't even completely sure if it would break Micah from this state. I mean, this state was still a complete mystery to me. And after so many attempts at basically the same thing, I decided it was time to take a step back and look over what I had recorded so far. I needed to find a consistency of some sort, something that occurred every single time that could explain exactly what was causing Micah to freeze. I was on some serious Batman Arkham City detective mode analysis type shit, taking note of where enemies were being restrained, which enemies were seemingly invincible, how many times Frank would fertilize the earth beneath him on each attempt, but there really wasn't anything that stuck out to me as consistent. That is, until I considered the situation a little differently. See, I was completely basing my potential solutions off the assumption that Micah's contemplative state was being caused by him not being able to kill the two final guards that spawned near the horses. And to an extent, this was true. He couldn't kill the two final guards. They were clearly scripted to be killed by Arthur. But the problem was, Despite the fact that restraining an enemy is often accepted by the game as the enemy being taken care of, in this case, it wasn't. And Michael was active in the shootout up until the moment that I would restrain one of these enemies. So it got me thinking, these final two members of the Strawberry Security Task Force, they were the obstacle. But the obstacle was not present from the beginning of this segment of the shootout, it was activated after a certain point. As in, these guards had a trigger that caused them to spawn, and everything seemed to go well consistently until they got involved. So basically, the next plan of action was to figure out what caused these final enemies to spawn. And thankfully, figuring that part out was quite easy. Believe it or not, despite his zero KO and zero kill record for this mission so far, Arthur had still been approaching this whole thing way too aggressively. See, what triggered these enemies to spawn was how far I moved up every single time. Simply moving too far down this road would cause the last two enemies to spawn, regardless of how many enemies Micah had killed or not killed beforehand. So maybe Micah just needed a little bit more space to work. Maybe we were trying to hold his hand through this whole process way too much, and maybe Maybe Micah just wanted to prove to himself that he still got it after the embarrassment of getting himself captured. Or maybe I was completely overthinking things so that it would fit within the narrative, but regardless, it was time to give this new strategy a try. This strategy involved doing a lot less work and being a lot less involved than I had been before. I mean, I still restrained an enemy or two here and there, drew a little bit of attention from Micah so we could take less damage, but other than that, my main focus was just to remain far away from the activation point of those final enemies and just to let Micah do his thing. I mean, who knew if this would really make a difference, but I was eager to see what would happen if we weren't the ones to activate their spawns. Would Micah stay in the same position regardless, just waiting for me to push forward? Would the enemies just spawn automatically, forcing us into two knockouts? I really wasn't sure, and I knew that two extra knockouts wasn't really the biggest deal, but I kinda really wanted to pass this perfectly. And eventually, my patience was rewarded. Micah took out the shooter on the balcony and the one position straight ahead, which finally caused something new to happen. I could postpone tearing my eyes out of their sockets once more as Micah darted right for the activation point of the enemy spawns and rushed in to continue the battle. Now, look, I I'm not gonna try and replicate the sound of excitement that I let out when this occurred, but if you uh, inhale helium and drop a cinder block directly on your toes causing irreversible damage, you may get something of the same effect. But anyway, we were finally in the next phase of the mission. If we were in the end game before, we were in the after credit scene now. 
New dialogue was playing. Micah wasn't fucking frozen stiff. Our luck definitely seemed to be on the turn. But unfortunately, Strawberry Security had absolutely sent their best for this final standoff. Despite our new situation, these guys were still completely invincible to Micah's attacks. And even though restraining them was an easily seized opportunity, that seemed to be the trigger for Micah's previous inactivity. And so, once again, this was the moment of truth. Could our boys rescue Micah without harming a single soul? I restrained one enemy. Micah continued fighting. I restrained the second enemy, and being lazier and doing less work actually paid off. Uh, please don't try to utilize that strategy in real life situations, but for this situation, it worked. Of course, I was relieved, but this was still no time for celebrations. A clean getaway was next on the cards, and Strawberry Security still had some agents to spare. Now, our first attempt at a getaway was far from clean. It really wasn't long before Micah was swarmed with enemies and left crying and bleeding to death on horseback, but the next attempt was at least a lot more eventful. Micah took out the first two pursuers with ease as we sped out of Strawberry, and we were soon met with our next two enemies who shot in from the left. And everything seemed to be going a lot better than the last time already, but that's when I was given my first heart attack of this chase. As we turned onto the next road, I took a look at the minimap and noticed there was an animal who had been killed. My immediate thought being, did we just trample an innocent little creature in the midst of our getaway? Now at the time, I of course didn't know this because it took going back and reviewing the gameplay to be sure, but thankfully, Frank did not trample the animal, and by the looks of things, it was actually one of the enemies who had hit the animal while shooting out with Micah. Now moving on from that heart attack, after last attempt I knew that the next two enemies were quite persistent, so I moved in and planned on just pulling one of them from their horse with my lasso and continuing on. But that is where I was given my second heart attack from this chase. When I pulled him from the horse, I was pretty convinced that he had died on impact with the ground, but again after reviewing the gameplay and slowing it right down to check, the enemy actually dies well before hitting the ground, confirming that Arthur was in fact not responsible for this man's death. I got stuck in the trees somehow while Micah took out the final pursuer, but surprisingly, we had actually broken Micah free from Strawberry without knocking anyone out or getting a single kill. Micah was out of his trance, he was back in the game, and this series never fails to make me question what is and what isn't within the realms of possibility. Micah was clearly still a little delirious, however, as he mentions this. But besides that, everybody seemed fine. The boys had a friendly chat about their political preferences while on the way back, before Micah decided it was time he got going. Arthur obviously questioned why the heck he wasn't coming back to the camp right away after such an ordeal, but Micah just said after the shame of being captured and locked away for so long, he really just needed some time to find himself. And so, he rode off into the trees on a mission of self-discovery. Upon returning back to the camp, Frank and Arthur were quite obviously exhausted. Taking on the entirety of Strawberry Security without harming a single soul was taxing work, but unfortunately, there was still no time to rest, as a new lead had just arisen in the camp. A well-earned sleep would once again have to wait, as there was more work that needed to be done. See, Hosea had just gotten word that there was some copycats in our midst. Way back in episode two, we were tasked with hunting down the killer of our good friend Davy. A deer with absolutely no remorse had taken his life, and although it was unfortunate that we were forced into killing the deer with a bow for revenge, it was a good thing that he had been taken off the streets, because he was bound to strike again. But his legacy had not been stamped out with his death the way people were expecting, no. No, in fact, it had been carried on stronger than ever. Hosea now had word that a rabbit operating just west of the Grizzlies was now in control of the animal's criminal underworld, and he was reported to be directly responsible for the murder of 12 innocent travelers. Arthur, of course, agreed to help him as he wanted to ensure no more lives were lost, but he wanted to preferably avoid taking the life of the rabbit as well. So Arthur was definitely in, but surprisingly, 
Frank was out. You see, when Frank was granted the power of telekinesis, he was also plagued with the fear of rabbits in an effort to balance out his power. So on the way to deal with the new kingpin of animal on human crime, we dropped Frank off at the local stable and picked ourselves up a completely random horse. This horse could not speak, this horse did not have a name, and this horse did not have the ability to control things with its mind. It was a regular, boring horse, and my longing for Frank grew with every moment that I was forced into riding it. Now, it didn't take long at all for Hosea to lead us right to the rabbit's last known whereabouts. And unsurprisingly, it didn't seem as if not killing the rabbit was an option. Hunting missions, at least from experience so far, always seemed to be unavoidable. I tried waiting the time out for in-game days, I tried knocking Hosea off his horse, I mean, really, I tried a bunch of things that I probably shouldn't have even bothered trying. Because as soon as I approached this mission, I was pretty sure that killing the rabbit was going to be absolutely impossible to avoid. So after spending an embarrassing amount of time still trying to avoid hunting the rabbit regardless, I wiped that murderous criminal scum off of the streets. Of course, because of the absolute saint that Arthur is, he would still search for a way to right this wrong, despite the heinous crimes that that rabbit had committed. With the people safe and the new kingpin off the streets, it was time to see if any of his henchmen were still loitering in the area. Arthur insisted to Hosea that there was to be no more murder, however, as he strongly believed a good stern talking to would set any remaining thugs down a much better path. After picking Frank up from the stables, the two began the trip back to camp so they could finally get some rest. They were severely running on empty at this point. They'd been saving the West for days straight without a single wink of sleep. But on the way back, this was when Frank remembered. While in the stables, he said he'd overheard a group of people joking about a horrifically inebriated man who was causing trouble at Flatneck Station. Now, this could have been any old alcoholic causing a scene by the station, but what confirmed to Frank that this was someone they knew was when they said the guy kinda looked like Hammy from over the hedge. That was when they knew it was their moonshine addicted buddy, Reverend Swanson. So it was one last mission before the boys got to rest. It was just one more act of good before they could watch the back of their eyelids in peace. And thankfully, picking up Reverend Swanson didn't sound like it would be an overly difficult task for the boys to complete. Or so I thought. You see, I really want you guys to know that I went into this mission with absolute confidence. And I want you guys to know that because that confidence was stripped immediately. There was nothing from memory that could prove a challenge in this mission. I mean, from what I could remember, all we had to do was follow Reverend Swanson around until we save him from getting turned to mist by an oncoming train. Right? Right? That's, that's all we had to do, right? What I had completely forgotten was that Reverend Swanson somehow manages to piss Kratos off in the five seconds that he goes missing. Now, this didn't seem like such a problem at first. I mean, I could just pull out my lasso and... Oh. Oh, fuck. So the lasso was disabled for this mission, which obviously set the odds strongly against us. How the hell were we meant to get through the God of War without any knockouts or kills if we couldn't just restrain him and be done with it? And, and look, I don't know what Reverend Swanson did to make Kratos so mad, but he wasn't even interested in us at first at all. He really just wanted to beat the shit out of the Reverend without any interruptions. But we, of course, couldn't have that, so it was time to focus on finding a solution for our god problem. It was a battle of the beards. One god versus the other. Except one was hell-bent on murder, and the other wanted nobody harmed. And needless to say, I was very lost and hopeless without the lasso. If you've watched any of the other episodes, usually a single enemy would be no issue at all. But without the option to simply restrain him with the lasso, what else was there? One of Arthur's special abilities had just been stripped away without warning. So it was time 
to get creative. And by creative, I mean running all the way back to Frank to see if he could give us any assistance. But as I expected, Frank wasn't overly interested in helping us out. No, uh, I couldn't mount him. He couldn't kick Kratos in the teeth. He just kind of stood there gazing at the view while Arthur was just about beaten to death. The following strategy involved even more running away, this time in hopes of getting so far away from the enemy that he would despawn or simply stop following. This was also out of the question, however, as Kratos was much too bloodthirsty to forget whatever it was that Swanson did to get on his nerves. As he made his way back, I considered getting the enemy to punch this innocent bystander while trying to punch me, as I thought maybe it would cause him to fight Kratos and knock him out for me. This didn't work, however, as we just awkwardly shimmied around the bystander until the enemy got bored and set out to exact his revenge once again. But that's when I stumbled across something kind of odd. While searching through my weapon wheel for the 50th time, just longing for my lasso, I noticed that for some reason, the option to set up camp was available. And so, while Kratos continued beating the shit out of Reverend Swanson, I selected the camp option, and it worked. And that is when I got a really, really good idea. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking, and uh, I, I also know that you know what this idea is. So, uh, I don't really want to say it out loud, because, uh, look... It sounds bad, okay? It sounds bad when you say it out loud. In fact, it sounds kind of evil, which is exactly what our boy Western Jesus isn't. But, you know, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. He can't possibly be held responsible if, you know, the enemy just so happens to stumble over to an active campfire and, you know, just so happens to walk into said campfire and, um, you know, completely by chance just happens to be burnt to a crisp, okay, that that is a freak accident, and, um, and nobody can be held responsible for such a freak accident when, uh, when, when they had nothing to do with it, right? With Kratos out of the way after a truly tragic and completely random freak accident, it was time to get Reverend Swanson back to the camp before he hurt himself or somebody else. We had to chase down the innocent bystander who watched as Reverend Swanson was beaten to a pulp to politely ask him to forget what he had seen as the perpetrator was no longer with us. You know, it was just a respect for the dead kind of thing. After that, Arthur had to stop Reverend Swanson from trying to make friends with the front of a speeding locomotive, and just as the day was drawing to a close, our boys Frank and Arthur had successfully returned Swanson to the camp alive and still very intoxicated. It really had been a busy couple of days for our heroes, but with work, eventually comes reward. And right now, for Frank and Arthur, there really was no greater reward than a good night's sleep. Because who knew what challenges would be waiting for them tomorrow? Thank you.